Teachers around the world are stepping out of their comfort zones to learn new technologies, the use of digital tools, apps, and resources to prepare themselves in remote teaching. When teaching remotely, it is important to prepare and have the necessary equipment, skills, and environment suitable to deliver remote lessons. Remote teaching is typically facilitated through technologies such as video conferencing software, discussion boards, or learning management systems. For a successful remote teaching, we teachers need to find a platform that can bring together the aspects that we need for communication and collaboration across a variety of scenarios in our organization. Microsoft has Microsoft Teams that addresses what we need for remote teaching. Think of Microsoft Teams or Teams as a hub for modern education. It is a unified communication and collaboration platform where you can do chat, calls, share files, and create teams to or for people to be able to work together. If you are not part of an existing organization and you don't have an Office 365 subscription, you can still install and use Microsoft Teams free version. The free version gives you unlimited chat, built-in group and audio or video calling, and file storage. Sign up to Microsoft Teams. The link is in the description of this video below. To set up your Teams, you can sign in with your per personal email address like Yahoo or even Gmail account, or with your Microsoft account like Hotmail, Live, or Outlook.com. You will be asked to choose if you are setting up the Teams for school, for friends and family, or for work. Choose the for work option. You don't need a credit card. All you have to do is respond to a verification email to complete the setup. After completing the process, you can now sign in to Microsoft Teams. I already have Teams, but for this tutorial, I set up a new Microsoft Teams because I want to show you how you can manage your Teams from the very start. Now let's dwell on how you can utilize the infrastructure or features of Microsoft Teams in your remote teaching. After you have set up and signed in, this is what you'll see in Teams. At the left side, you can see the key features like activity, which shows you all activities related to Teams, chat, where you can enjoy public and private conversations, one-on-one -on -one or group chat with the members of your teams. Teams, here you can set up a community, groups, or virtual classroom that allows your students to communicate with one another, let your students view presentations or video. You can share resources and discuss lessons. Meetings, you can calendar or schedule your call or session and share the meeting link to your students or colleagues. Calls, here you can organize your contacts set up a call or video call, chat, and send a message via email to the members of the teams. Files, files can be shared to the members of the teams. You can check when and who modify the files in your teams. The first team or group that will be in your teams is the name of the company or organization that you type in when you set up your Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams also consider that as your organization. BINAS is the abbreviation of the school I am currently working in and teaching. I won't change the group or team name because I have a different purpose for this team or group. I will create new teams or groups instead. This is also to demonstrate how you can create your own teams. Before creating my new teams, I'll add and invite people who will be part of my Microsoft Teams or organization. Who are these people? I am a grade 10 science teacher, so I'll invite my grade 10 students and science teachers that I can collaborate and work with to certain activities and projects. I can add members of my teams here. I can use this to invite people in my teams or organization. Once I click this, I can choose from the following options to invite people to join in my teams. Copy link. I can tap this to copy the link. I can post the link to Messenger. Invite your contacts. 
I can invite the people from my email contact list. The contact list in my Microsoft account, I have Hotmail and Outlook accounts, or even the contact list in my Gmail account. I can also invite people to my teams by sending them email invitations to join in my teams. Here, I can enter the email address of my student, then say that's student one, the email address of my second student, student two, click add more to enter more members to the organization, then click send invite. Student 1 and 2 will receive emails of invitation to join in Vinas organization from Microsoft team. Okay, now I will create my class teams. Let us say I am handling two classes and I need to create a class team for each class or section. To create a team, just click or tap join or create team. Okay, you can build a team from existing Office 365 or, or um, team if you have, or build a team from scratch. I'll select building a team from scratch. Then you can choose from the following kinds of team, private, public, or guide. I'll select private so whoever wants to be part of my team needs my permission to join. I can give details about my team like the team name. I'll call my first class team section one. I can add short details here, then click create. In your class team, you'll work, collaborate and conduct virtual meetups with your students. So your next step is to add members to your class team. In this part, you can type the names of students that are, that, that are already in your organization or their emails to send them invitation. For my section one class team, I'll add students one and two. Okay, click add. You can assign a role, member, or owner to every member of your team. I'll keep students one and two to be members of my section one team. Once you're done, click close. Now section one is added to the list of my teams. Just follow the same process in creating your, your other teams. I'll create another team. And from scratch, also private, section two, eight. I'll just skip uh, this part. Okay, once a team is created, you can modify a member's role within the team or delete a member. I can change a member's role by selecting the ellipsis by the name of the team and choose manage team. I can delete a member of the team if I need to by selecting the X mark by their name. Inside the Manage Team feature, you can select Settings to modify member permissions and further control conversations. Within the Member Permissions section, you can decide whether members can create and delete channels, tabs, connectors, and or messages. The Guest Permissions section gives you the options if you will allow the guests in your team to create and update channels or delete channels. The at mention sections or section allows you to choose who can use 
a theme and a channel mentions. Additionally, in the fun stuff section, you can decide whether students are permitted to use stickers and memes. Okay, within each theme, you can create channels. What are channels? Channels can be the different groups in your team. We teachers have different ways of grouping the students in our class. We group our students according to the same skill level, according to interest, classroom management, or according to the task assigned to them. To create a channel, go to the general tab of your team, then click create more channels. You can also uh, do this by clicking the ellipses next to the team name. Then select add channel. Okay, I'll create channels based on the task that I will give to the students. So my first channel is group one research. This uh, channel is for my students who will be assigned to do investigatory project. Okay, for my next channel, group to robotics. This channel is for my students whose output at the end of the quarter has integration of robotics. Okay, so I now have two channels in my section one team. So within your team, you can communicate and collaborate with your students in the chat tab. Chat tab is available in your team's general channel or in any channels you create. Down here, you can start your conversation. Hi everyone. Any update on the progress of your projects? Then click send. Okay, let's type that again. Hi, everyone. Any update on the progress of your projects? Okay, so this message is visible to everyone in the channel and it's not private. All members of the team can view and add to conversations in the general channel. But if you want to address the conversation to a specific member of the team, you can type at symbol before the name of the member. Or to address the conversation to all the members of any channel, then type at symbol before the channel name. Example, at student1. Okay, then I can type my message for student1. Or at group one, and then type the message for members of group one. What I like in Teams is the formatting options that you can do for your message. By clicking this format tab, you can access the different formatting tools that to customize your message. You also have an option to attach a file you can upload a file from your device or computer or from OneDrive. Then to see all the files shared in the channel, go to files. You can check when it was shared, who and when it was modified. You can insert emoji. You have lots of options of emoji as well as GFs. You can also insert a sticker. Here you can select from the different categories 
like office drama, meme, designers, etc. Interestingly, you can edit the line or dialogue in each sticker. So I want to send a meme to my students for a job well done. So I want this meme. So for the top caption, good job. Bottom caption, keep it up. Click done and send. You can also praise a student or group for performing well in your online class by clicking this praise tab. Then choose the appropriate badge for the student or group. In case you need to have a private conversation with your students or group of students in your team, you can use this new chat tab right here at the top. Just type the name, email, or group of the students here. So I want to have a private conversation with a student. Mm. Student one. Then type the message here. Okay, deadline or submission of project on Wednesday. Okay, so this conversation is just between me and student one. Okay, the other thing that you can do in the conversation stub is to post an announcement and provide a visual reminder to students about upcoming activities or assignments. Announcement is a good way to ensure that your entire team knows there is something especially important for them to know. So to create an announcement, click this format tab, new conversation, select announcement, then you can start typing your announcement here. You can use the different formatting options here to make your announcement stand out. Example, to remind my section one team about our online class next week, I can post an announcement about the online class. I, I can include the date and time of our online class in the subhead. I'll type the lesson that we will discuss in our online class. And to make sure that all the members of section one will be notified about this announcement, I'll type at section one. I can change the background color of my announcement by clicking this color scheme tab. So I can select from the available solid colors here. I can also um, change the background of my announcement by clicking this background image tab to upload an image from my device. I'll just uh, adjust the image. Okay, so I now have an announcement. Click send. Okay, so meetings is another key feature of the Teams to schedule an online class or virtual uh, meetups. In the meetings, you have the options to start the call right away or schedule it to a date convenient to all the members of the team. I'll schedule a meeting for my section one class. Okay, I can type the title of um, my activity. So online class. I can set the date and time. So once I click schedule, I have the following options to share the meeting invitation to my students, like 
copying the meeting invitation and posting it in the messenger share the link via outlook or google calendar so i'll click copy meeting invitation and post it here in the conversations tab and to make sure that all the members of section one will be notified i'll type at section one then send okay so for the students to join in the meeting they can just click this meeting link i'll go ahead to the most important feature of microsoft teams the video meetup for your remote teaching I can set up a virtual meetup or online class using the Meet Now tab here, the one with a video cam icon or figure. So once I click this Meet Now tab, my video appears on my screen. You can give a title to your meeting. So in my case, I'll call this meeting online class once i click this meet now tab okay teams gives me the options on how i can invite people to join in my meeting or online class i can copy the meeting link and post it in the conversations tab or messenger or I can send email invitations to my students. Okay, here you can access the different tools that are useful for this meeting. I haven't started the online class yet and I and have not invited people to participate in the class. Before I start, I want to make sure that everything is working well. I can turn my camera on or on and off, unmute and or mute my microphone. Just to check that I have no technical problems with my camera and microphone. I can also do that here in the more up more actions tab. Okay, by selecting this show device setting. At the right side, I can check if my cam and microphone are okay. Back to this uh, more actions tab. You can check the other options here like show meeting notes. This is important if you want to take notes of the meeting of the things that you have discussed in your class. You can share this notes to your students, which they can use as reference or review materials. There's enter, enter full screen. But what amazes me here is the show background effects feature of Teams. Okay, with this, I can change my background by choosing from the available background settings here. Okay, just select the background that you want. So I want this. So just click that background and click apply. So I now have a different background. During your online class, aside from using their microphones, the students can also participate in the discussion using the meeting chat. They can type their questions in the conversations tab and uh, the response or answers to your questions. So there is show conversation here. 
So when you click this, on the right side, you can see the meeting chat. Here, the students can type their message. They can attach emoji or insert emoji, Jiffy, and sticker. You can also insert praise. Okay, you and your students can collaborate and share files in the meeting chat. So you can attach file here. Raise, raise your hand tab is also useful in managing the discussion during your online class. The students can use this to be recognized uh, if they want to share ideas. Now let's check the participants tab. Now in the participants tab, you can manually invite your students to join in the online class by typing the names of the students in this box. Teams also give suggestions of the team members that you can invite in your virtual meetup. Here, the, suggest the suggestions are actually the members in your team. So I'll invite a student one to join in the meeting by clicking this ellipsis, ask he asking him to join in the meeting. Okay, so student one accepted the call and now a participant in this online class. You can mute your participants to avoid audio feedbacks. Make sure to set all the participants as attendees so that they cannot interrupt your presentation or this discussion by sharing their screens. The participants will be notified that they cannot share their screens once you click this. However, if an attendee is assigned to report or share in the class, then you can make that, that attendee or that student a presenter. With that, you allow that student to share screen or file when it is his or her time or moment to share in the class. Now, in your discussion, you can share files or lesson presentation using this share tab. When you click this tab, you have the options to share your desktop, window, share PowerPoint presentation, browse a file from your device, or share this whiteboard app. This whiteboard app is very useful when you are showing a process of solving word problems. Actually, I have a separate video tutorial for utilizing whiteboard app but a more advanced whiteboard app, the one with more functionalities in remote teaching. If you have a video to share, make sure to click this include system audio box. Okay, let's try um, sharing my desktop. Okay, by doing that, I can share also my presentation, my material in discussing the lesson about the OMS law. I can share a Word file or PDF file. I can also share my browser. Oh, that's, that's it. So when you're done with your discussion, just click this small box here to go back to this. You can stop the sharing by clicking the share button again. Okay, like our routine in the face-to-face -face instruction, 
we give an assessment after the discussion of the lesson. I can share the quiz that I made in, in Microsoft Forms or um, the quiz that I created using the other application by just getting the link of that quiz Okay, here's the link. And then back to Microsoft Teams in the meeting chat. I can post the link here. And that link is also posted in the conversations tab. So as soon as the link is shared in the meeting chat, the students can click the link to access and answer the quiz. Now, when you're done with your online class and it's time to end the meeting, make sure to stay on the meeting until all your students leave the meeting. Then, then leave the meeting by clicking this hang up tab. Now, What's this BINAS team for? This team is dedicated for my co-teachers. This is for sharing and collaboration of ideas, plans, activities, and programs for professional development. I can also create channels, chat, share files, and have video meet up with my co-teachers here. I hope you've learned something on how you can utilize the different functionalities of Microsoft Teams in remote teaching. To see more videos of the teaching tools that you can apply in your class, please hit the subscribe button below.